Hi everyone, and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. My name is Gabriella Handel, if you're new, and I'm a draftsman, and today I'm talking to you about the 11th of Dennis Dutton's cluster criteria for art, of which there are 12, according to him. I'm going to read the corresponding excerpt, and then I will muse about it a little bit. If you'd like to support my audiovisual channel, you can do so by liking and sharing this video, and also by subscribing. These are all immediate and at no additional cost to you. If you'd like to support what I do with money, it's also very welcome and appreciated. You can do so by purchasing my drawings directly from my website, which is gabriellahandle.com. Just one word. You can purchase crafts I make from eBay, you can buy prints of my drawings, or you can leave me a tip. The links for all of these will be in the caption. Thank you for your time and attention, and let's read the second to last criteria by... Uh, Dennis Dutton in his book, The Art Instinct. This time I got the criteria right because I checked which one it was right before starting. Okay, so the 11th criteria is art traditions and institutions. But let's, fir let's first review the criteria. Number one is direct pleasure. Number two, skill and virtuosity. Number three, style. Number four, novelty and, created, and creativity. Number five, criticism. Number six, representation. Number seven, special focus. Number eight, expressive individuality. Number nine, emotional saturation. Number 10, intellectual challenge. Number 11, Art, Traditions, and Institutions. Number 12, Imaginative Experience. Okay. So, let's read Art, Traditions, and Institutions. Quote, Art, Traditions, and Institutions. Art objects and performances, as much in small-scale oral cultures as in literate civilizations, are created and to a degree given significance by their place in the history and traditions of their art. As philosopher Gerald Levinson has argued, works of art gain their identity by the ways they are found in historical traditions in lines of historical precedents. precedents. Overlapping this notion are earlier views argued by philosophers Arthur, Arthur Danto, Terry Diffie, and George Dickey to the effect that works of art gain meaning by their, by being produced in an art world in what are essentially socially constructed art institutions. Institutional theorists Institutional theorists tend to apply their minds to ready-mades and, conce and conceptual art because the interest of such works is close to exhausted by their importance in the historical situation of their production. Such works stand in contrast to other canonical works, such as ben Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, which, although open to extensive historical and institutional analysis, is able to gather for itself a huge and enthusiastic world audience of listeners who know little or nothing of its institutional context. Even a minimal appreciation, on, other, on the other hand, of Duchamp's Fountain requires a knowledge of art history, or at least of the contemporary art context. In parenthesis, Virtually all organized, organized social activities, medicine, warfare, warfare, education, politics, technologies, and activities, and sciences, are built up against a backdrop of historical and institutional traditions, customs, and demands. Institutional theory as, promote, as promoted in modern aesthetics can be applied to any human practice whatsoever. End parenthesis, and also, end quote. Okay, so that is Art, Traditions, and Institutions, the 11th of the 12, 12 criteria for art, uh, according to Dennis Dutton. Um, so, okay, let's see. Um... So let's see. So obviously, 
much like people will say, you will hear said that this or that person was a person of their time. Uh, that's applicable to anything and everything that anything, everything, and everyone, I think. Because those objects and those people were are a result of everything that happened in history until they, you know, that is, those are their, those are the circumstances under which they were produced. People and objects, are all objects, art objects, uh, buildings, uh, useful objects, not useful objects, uh, just everything. But, and I like this, I like this distinction a lot, like I first rolled my eyes when I read over the ready-made stuff again, because he mentioned it in the previous um, criteria, which is intellectual challenge, and I was annoyed in the previous video because he insinuates that Duchamp's ready-mates are art, which really annoyed me. Uh, but then here, he points out that which I consider to be a flaw. And this, which I consider to be a flaw, was kind of remarked uh by the previous episode of a conversation about art or you know episode 76 of a conversation about art with robert florzak uh i don't actually remember if we talked about it in the episode or it was in an interview with him that i saw afterwards with i think julie hartman uh but either way the thing is that he argues and i agree with him that you one should be able to enjoy or contemplate a work of art without understanding anything about the work of art uh, because art is visual and you know if you're looking at something with your eyeballs you don't need to speak the language you don't need to understand any circumstances you don't have to be able to read the little paragraph uh, the little plaque with the paragraph explaining the conceptual work of art or the ready-mades you don't have to understand any of that when gazing upon a, upon a work of art because if you do, it, it, if that is necessary for the work of art to be co contemplated or appreciated or anything, that's a flaw in the work of art. The work has to be able to stand on its own without the aid of any of that stuff to provide an enriching experience for the viewer. Um, and I quite like that he makes that comparison here. So the difference is that anyone can see and appreciate and maybe even love a work, uh, a Michelangelo, one of his sculptures, his drawings, Da Vinci, like this type of guy. Um, or like the example that Dutton uses here, uh, Beethoven's. It's like, you don't have to speak the language, you don't have to know who Beethoven was, you don't have to even know who the artist is in these circumstances to find something amazing or impressive or to spend time with that work of art it's like you don't need ex an explanation you don't need the circumstances you don't need the history of the painting or of the artist or of the period of time in which it was created you don't need that but then with duchamp's little little art artworks uh in quotes it, it the value of that stuff that he made is because of the circumstances under which it was made which is a flaw because you can't look at those things without knowing why they were made or when you're looking at it it's just a freaking urinal and it's like all right urinals stink you know when you go to a men's bathroom it fucking reeks of piss okay um for example where it's like oh it's a spinning bike thing put on another whatever it was like a tripod or whatever i don't know and it's like, that is fucking meaningless. And it's like, but then on the other hand, if you know that he was so tired of, uh, what was it? I don't know, some kind of a alleged establishment thing that it's like, oh, maybe you can start, oh, okay, I guess I can understand why he would do that. You know, to then from that derive some meaning from looking at these ready-mades in quotes. Um, and that is also the great flaw, in my opinion also, uh, of just conceptual art that does not stand on its own visually and you know whatever in MoMA you know the canvases that are just white 
or just like one stroke of color or that sort of stuff that requires like this paragraph of like cult leader talk that says nothing even though they wrote it like half a page of words you know um it's like you you need to read that half page of cult speak cult art speak to try to decipher something about the meaning of that work you know whereas other things other works of art other visual works of art when they are good they need no it's like you you don't have to know anything about art you don't have to understand art in quotes you don't have to have a degree in art you don't have to know how to paint you don't have to know the artist you don't have to know what they used and you can still you can still look at the work and enjoy it and derive some kind of you know find some kind of meaning from it whatever whatever that might be um because that's the point. It doesn't. It doesn't necessarily matter what it means. Um, when the work visually stands on its own, it's like, it, and it stands on it stands on its own. When you can look at it, and you want to keep looking at it, and you want to keep looking for something in it, because when you see the work, you can. It. You have the sense that the work is telling you something, or that it wants to tell you something. So, uh, you know, in order for the work to kind of deliver its message to you much like when somebody talks to you it takes a while for all of the words to come out because they come out one by one you have to hang out for a little bit and listen to all of the words and then you kind of uh distill a message from the words that were given to you so then that takes a little while same with a piece of work you hang out with it for a little while and you wait looking at it until it tells you whatever it may um uh so yeah I like that a lot and I was like again I was annoyed in the previous uh, criteria that he seemed to flatter Duchamp by insinuating that his work is art uh, you know he didn't directly say Duchamp make these works of art but he referred to them as works you know um, and so I was kind of miffed at that but then I feel like now Dutton has redeemed himself himself a little bit by saying this you know that they're just deeply flawed in that sense that they are useless as works as works of visual art thank you sir okay uh so right so i think that's it i'm gonna leave it at that for now um do you think that what do you think of this argument of art having to be able to stand on its own without any kind of explanation from anything uh looking at a work of art without knowing who the artist is, without knowing what they used, uh, without knowing what year it was made, what was happening that year, this type of stuff. Um, and, and I mean, not to kind of shit on the curiosity for that stuff, because I for sure get curious about that sort of stuff. Like, wow, I wonder uh, what was happening at the time, sometimes, that for sure that happens. Like, sometimes after having after having enjoyed a piece of work, uh, just looking at it for a little while, knowing what was happening at the time or what the artist was thinking of or what the artist originally intended, quote unquote, it adds to the enjoyment of the work. But I am able to enjoy the work without that. So I think that is specifically important for the enjoyment of work. Um, so I'm gonna leave it at this. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Please remember to like and share this video and leave me a comment with your thoughts on the subject. I like this criteria a lot. Uh, I like some of the, the other ones a lot too, but anyway, I just enjoy the, discer the discernment between good stuff and stuff that's just shitty. So well, thanks again and have a fantastic day.